All right, that's what's happening so far on all things beautiful homestead with Carrie and Mindy. And I'm Carrie. And if you're new to my channel, could you please subscribe and, and like it and maybe share it? Um, I do have some things on here you could see uh, what I'm doing in a in a city size backyard. That's all I have. I don't have acreage. I want acreage. I plan on moving to get some. But before I make that move, I want it to, you know, uh, exhaust all that I can in my city backyard. So my city yard consists of, uh, here's my driveway, and uh, I used to have a, a, a fence right here, as you can see the post, and it, there was a gate, a double gate up there, was here, and went to my house. So I moved it all the way up to the front of my house and, I, and incorporated this part of in my yard, this piece of property that goes from the edge of your driveway to the fence. And I have, this is where I, I grow blackberries. Now, we've done all of us the blackberries. As you can see this area here, all that's got to be cut out, but there's some new growth for next year. And that's how blackberries work. The, the, the year uh, that you have fruit, uh, those canes die. You don't, they don't produce fruit anymore. And while that, all that's going on, it's the, the plant's producing new canes for the following year. So I have, so I have uh, blackberries here. And on each end of it, that's a plum tree. And that's a two-year-old plum tree. So she's brand new. I just, just purchased her uh, a couple of months ago. And uh, I have a plum tree here that I've been having, uh, and I had purchased two of them. You need two to uh, pollinate, they cross pollinate. And I had two, but one died from a freeze that we had. It was planted, matter of fact, it was planted right here where that, that uh, lemon tree is, and uh, it died. So I've been, I didn't get rid of it, I left it, and I finally just got me another one. Now, this one here is a is a self-pollinating plum tree so uh, I'm definitely gonna get plums off of this now if this one and this one happen to flower at the same time if they be if they you know flower at the same time so I'm getting blossoms at the same time then this one will probably bear fruit if they do it at different seasons this one will never bear fruit because it's gonna need another one that blossoms in the same at the same time so I'm hoping that they're both gonna do it at the same time so uh, and I'm, I'm believing it's gonna probably be uh, probably this fall I'll know something I think they'll, they'll blossom in the fall and I'll have fruit <coughs> excuse me in the in the springtime that's what I'm thinking um, that's how that's how my peach tree worked okay so I have that I have a lemon tree which is uh, again she's young last year she gave me one uh, one lemon so this year there's seven on there so I know now probably next year will we'll be good this peach tree here last year I had one peach this year I had over 60 peaches come over here that were beautiful uh, so um, and so this year uh, in the fall I'm gonna get in here and I'm gonna uh, I got to do some pruning on on her um, over here I have a mandarin tree that's a couple years old um, and this is first year putting out fruit and as you can see there's some mandarins out on here some up here uh, there's only like four on here um, for this year so I'm excited about that um, okay so all of that right there is all along my fence it's that area between your driveway and your fence that that five foot space you know now I have concrete all the way from the street all the way back here to the so this whole side here I, I have that's what I have going and uh, I'm fixing to clear this area out right here I need to clear this out and I'm gonna uh, get these posts out I gotta get rid of the all this stuff here and I'm gonna take that uh, that down right there 
and I'm gonna build this up with the lane with the mud across here and I'm probably gonna go ahead and put me another tree right in this area here okay um, probably an orange tree I had an orange tree that died so I want to get another orange tree and that would kind of take care of this side for me here now I do uh, in between um, I tried something this year um, and I got I know I got to cut the grass back here but uh, here's a uh, um, watermelon I planted a watermelon and she's sprouting out and this is the only one that's really doing good I planted a uh, watermelon here she never did do anything um, and I planted a watermelon there did a little bit she stopped growing so I'm probably not going to get nothing here I put one in there but all of a sudden when this stuff grew over here it kind of blocked the sun so it, it, it died and this one here I don't know <coughs> what happened to her but I had put one there so so the only thing I really have going so I want to show you you see that real green see there's a new cane coming up out the ground right there see how green it is and um, now what happens too sometimes guys is as you can see like this hole right here and I have holes uh, I have a hole here but it's getting filled in um, that um, and, and you're gonna see some throughout here and this, uh, but they get filled they get filled back in after a while um, but I dig I dig up the ones that start growing out here because you know seeds fall and and they and I start getting some growth out here and uh, and what I do is I dig them up and I pot them and I take care of them for a little while and after about a month or two when I know they're not dying I turn around and I sell them and I usually make about two hundred dollars um, every year off my blackberry plants selling plants and I'll show them to you right here okay all right now see here's one that I just recently uh, put up see the, the ones that's uh, good enough to sell that I've been having for a while I go ahead and I stick um, this uh, pine shavings around it so I, I kind of separates it from me. See this is one that I just recently uh, dug up uh, still taking care of her. She's still kind of struggling uh, to, to come back uh, and I also do the same thing with the fig trees. I have a fig tree over there and I'll show you that and when you cut branches off you can propagate them. So I have one in, in the water here and see how the roots roots are growing on it and so uh, this is the uh, take it. This one's taking longer than all the other ones. I'm gonna just leave it in the water. <coughs> and uh, so anyway, see here's a blackberry. Blackberry. There's a blackberry. I, I just sold one uh, not that long ago. And um, let me get this grass out of here. Cause sometimes this grass will grow. Be hard to get them out. There's another one. So uh, I usually make about. I've sold a few already this year. Um, these are some of the later ones. Uh, I'll, I'll sell them though. They'll sell this summer, and um, I'll make a post on Craigslist or in Marketplace or something, and and I, and I used to sell them. But I make about 200 bucks, and, and so doing that, I don't have to sell my berries because everybody, every, everybody wants to buy my berries, but I want my berries. I make jams and jellies and. And uh, we just eat them too. We put it, throw them in a blender when we're making smoothies. My wife's into making uh, smoothie drinks, nutrition drinks. So we use them for that. And we just like sometimes just sit around and eat them. I have right now probably about 25 pounds of, uh, of blackberries in my freezer. So you can freeze them. So uh, that's, that's what we did this year. I'm not going to worry about selling any. And I might not even make the jams this year. Because uh, it does take a lot of blackberries to make the jams. Um, now, when I when we move and I get my property, I'm going to make a really nice size blackberry arch it. I'm going to make an arch it for trees, and that's something that um, if you are new to all of this, and you know with this, you know this, uh, a lot of people are uh, are looking for a new way of living. You know, especially with the coronavirus, and believe me, you guys. You haven't seen the end of what 
all of this is caused, okay? We're going to have food shortages. We're already having that. We're having a spike in prices of food. And so we need to learn how to supplement some of that some kind of way. Yeah, those of us that live in the city, we're never, never going to be able to really grow probably enough to, you know, sustain a, a, a large family. Now, you can do a lot, believe me. And, I, and I've, I've seen people on YouTube that have a regular size lot, and, and they are doing that. But they live in, a, in an area, like I live in an area, well, there's a lot of rules, codes here, okay? I'm, but I'm not like in a, in a big city. I'm in a rural city, okay? Outside of a major city. Um, not, it's not country. And... Um, it was at one time, a long time ago, when I was a kid, it was country out here. Um, but people moved out this way and they kind of modernized it and made it more like a city. Um, and so you have people that's been here a long time. They might have some farms and have cattle and stuff and have uh, land for it. Uh, but through the years, all that kind of dwindled away and they just made it a, a city, built a bunch of houses close together. Uh, not not as close as in the city where I grew up at, but they still consider I consider it close together, and uh, just kind of ruined this little area really. So we're looking to get out. But anyway, no matter where you live, even if you live in an apartment with a balcony, or you have one of them little small, you might be on the bottom floor and you have one of the little small yards, you, you can cram pack. I'm cramming. Look. I'm cramming things. I'm going to go through my whole yard. I'm going to show you I'm cramming things in here. Now, I had a business back here for years, and we drove forklifts. My 90% of my backyard, you guys, is concrete. Let me show, look, this is all, all concrete. Concrete. My chicken coops on concrete. My... my my uh, greenhouse is on concrete okay all right so on the concrete I made these elevated beds look at this elevated beds and I got another one back there I got one back here now I had this all this stuff I got to get cleared out we had a, a storm coming through and I picked up all my loose stuff and I just put it up back here and I tie, uh, you know, I strapped it down just so nothing would blow around. <clears throat> so I got to get back here, but I'm making a, I'm making a pen back here, a pig pen back here. But let me get back here. So I have a compost pile here, but I'm going to be taking that out. And I have an area that's about 15 by 12 right here that I'm going to uh, use this wood that I got right here and these panels. And I'm going to make me a, a pig pen back here and, uh, I'm going to attempt to raise two pigs. I've never done that before. I'm going to give it a shot. And if it, everything goes well, that'll be fine. If it don't and people complain, I'm, I'm going to have to get rid of them. I, I get it. But I'm going to give it a shot. And I'm, I'm tired of talking low. I'm talking close to the camera because I don't want, you know, I want to do this without people knowing. And even though I'm going to be on YouTube, locals don't know who I am. Okay. So that's going to be the area here. So I was, I was going to do uh, rabbit cages on this fence and that fence. That's what I originally was going to do here and raise meat rabbits. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. But I'm going to do the pigs here. I have bee, beehive there. So I have bees. <coughs> I got chicken coop here. I got it divided in half right now. This is my egg layers, which they, they're young. They, they're not laying yet, but they... I'm going to feed y'all. Usually, I feed them at this time in the morning. I'm going I'm to come feed you. And I put a wall up. And, and I got me some meat chickens. So these guys are going to be butchered in uh, in July. I think July 11th is uh, my my butcher date. Well, I'll start, you know. It looks like some of them are a little smaller than others. So I might, I might let the smaller ones live another week or two. <clears throat> and, you know, once I... Once I uh, we butcher these, then that door <coughs> that's divide that I have on that dividing wall, that'll swing open and, and lock it in, and my hands will have access to the whole coop. <coughs> and so this will just happen uh, 
possibly twice a year. I got to I got to figure it out. I want to figure it out. I'm thinking I'm, I'm going to do this twice a year. <clears throat> but these suckers eat a lot, and I'm not used to spending that kind of money on on food because they eat a whole lot. They go through 50 pounds. Now that's 26 birds here, meat birds, and they go through 50 pounds in three days. <clears throat> so they they eat a lot. Okay, it's it's kind of um, kind of uh, more than uh, I thought. I knew they were going to eat a lot. I knew it was going to spend money, but it's just a shock. That's all I can say. All right, so I'm just trying to give you a little update on what's going on. So I took uh, I do have a uh, it used to be a shop I used to work in. It's uh, 16 by 24. Okay, 16 by 24. <clears throat> and uh, so you can see it back here and it needs some work I know and it's cluttered in the inside and uh, I if, if we're gonna be here a long amount of time I am gonna get in here and clear out half of it and do a, a microgreen farm in the inside there okay that's if we can't never move from here <clears throat> so things happen and we can't move I know some because some people get stuck you get stuck. We make bad choices in life, financial decisions, and we and we get ourselves in debt, and we get stuck. Well, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not stuck that way. I'm just stuck where uh, I just don't have the the money to to leave. And because we did a a remodification on our house loan, um, I'm still I still have a house note, and um, I don't have enough money in the house. If I sold it to just pick up and move and go buy something. So uh, right now we got some things working in in, uh, in the courts. We have uh, some wills uh, from parents. Uh, Mindy's parents, both of them, passed away. We we in the courts with that. And uh, and you know my my mom is not doing too good, and she's probably uh, not going to be around much longer. And so there's going to be an inheritance from there too. <clears throat> so when all that happens, we'll be able to move. So we don't know how long it's going to be. We don't know when. We don't even know if the amount of money that we're going to get from all of that is even going to be enough to do what we want to do. So when, when that happens, we can make decisions. And uh, But we're hoping to know something in the next year, okay, within the next year. And if something happens and we can't move and we have to stay here, and, we, and we've even uh, come to terms with that, well, if we have to stay here, we have to stay here. And if we do, then I'm going to convert half of my shop into a microgreen farm, half of it, and I'm gonna uh, fix it up really good, close it in, put air condition in it, and uh, lighting for uh, you know grow lights and all that, and fix it up as a microgreen farm. But until then, this is everything I'm doing back here. So I have this little lean-to off of the off of my shed, and it's uh, 12 foot, 12 foot by eight, coming out eight feet. And what I did in here, you guys, is I uh, I have me uh, quail. I'm raising quail for meat and eggs, and I'm doing good. And I'm even making a little money because I get the eggs. I, I go ahead and I, uh, I pickle eggs and I sell those. So I'm getting a little income in from that. That helping me with the feed, with the meat chickens, the hens, and the quail. So here we have. Uh, I have four breeder cages that I made. Now only two of them, only two of them have have birds in them. Okay, now this one, this one has uh, a, one male right here, and he has five females, or four. He has, uh, he, he has four females. This one here has one male and five females, okay? So, um, I, I want to get him another female, and I want to eventually get these two up and operating but I need more birds so over here I made a incubator a grow box and a, a, I mean a, a brooder and a grow box okay so here's the incubator and the incubator right now uh, um, I had just recently had eggs in the turner and I had taken them out and put them in the hatch tray and uh, right now I have 10 little 
hatchlings in here that just started yesterday. They started hatching yesterday. And I hear one crying in here and I have I have two in here right now. Uh, it's still drying off and I still have four more eggs that uh, that we need you know need to hatch. So we'll see what happens there. So under this 12 by 8 lean to I have that. And also I have this setup, which uh, is just about ready for me to start putting some plants in it. But it's my aquaponics, and I had to um, let's get this here. Everything you can see. I have a it's a horse trough, and uh, because before this I had aquaponics set up some years ago, and I had an IBC set tote, and that's the top part, the grow part, and the bottom of it. Well, it just got old and. I got rid of it and I made this my my tank and I had to uh, cover this up because I was getting a lot of uh, algae growing and that's a big filter there because I had to filter the water a little bit because I was overfeeding them and I had uh, put too much feed in there for the fish that it was uh, clogging up my my uh, my pumps so um, I'm gonna be taking that out today. I've got I got it all under control now, and I, I'm gonna start uh, inside. I'm gonna go ahead and start some uh, some plants to put out here. Now I'm also not finished here because I'm I'm gonna grow in here uh, stuff that's winter, even though it's, I'm in the middle of the of the summer here. It's hot here. It's not even the middle of the summer. I don't even think it's summer yet where we are. We're still in the spring, but we're in June. And the, the, the uh, first day of summer is coming up probably next week. But it's hot. I'm in Louisiana, and it's hot here, okay? Um, so greens are not going to do good here right now. But I'm trying to, I'm gonna try to make this area. So I'm going uh, to get some shade uh, covering to put around here, okay? So that I can grow me some lettuce and some bok choy, things like that. So uh, I'm going to give it a shot. I mean... You got to try things, and so if I can get that going, you guys, I could pretty much have greens, and then have uh, you know my cucumbers and, and tomatoes going all year long because uh, I'm grow I grow tomatoes, cherry tomatoes, regular tomatoes, um, cucumbers. Uh, here, here's here's just a few that I picked this morning, right there. There's some okra, and. Um, and what I'm going to do is in the winter, I'm going to use the greenhouse to grow um, my tomatoes and cucumbers and peppers. So, uh, and I won't be able to have as many, but that's okay. I'll have some. All right. So uh, that's what that's what I have so far on this this part of my yard. You're seeing I have one, two, three, four. I got five trees on this side of my yard five trees and I have my blackberry patch down there okay all right now off of my deck right here I just made a little swing area that we could sit out here and swing and then I just I'm just putting this together I'm not finished it making a little outdoor grill for us that's gonna be a little outdoor grill okay so uh, as we walk up here as you as you'll see sorry I have some containers here so I have that's a blueberry that's a fig. You can see, probably see figs all in here. And this is its uh, first year. Look at it. Putting off figs. And this is a cutting off of a fig tree. And those other cuttings that I have over there, that I have over there, are cuttings off of this. Because last year this was bigger. And I cut it down. And, um, okay, here's a blueberry. This is a, a premier. Is the name of it. Uh, here's another blueberry. It's called uh, Powder Blue. Now all the berries are gone. We done ate the berries and plus the birds been attacking them. Here's a here's a black a blueberry that I've been trying to save and help her out for over a year now, and she's starting to come. Look at the new growth here, right there. So she's going to finally make it. It took her a while. We had a freeze a couple of years ago that uh, just stopped its growth so I'm just I can't bring myself to throw it away or kill it 
So it's starting to, starting to come back. All right, here's a little area here that this year I grew potatoes in here and I did pretty well. So my only problem was I planted them a little bit too late because uh, I'm just learning about potatoes. So I got the potatoes out and I got squash in here and I got uh, jalapeno peppers. And these were all plants that I had uh, uh, seeded them in my greenhouse. I grew them from seed. Okay. Uh, next is my asparagus garden. And that's what you, all the stuff that looks like fern is asparagus. And, and, you, and uh, when the asparagus are too thin, you just let them grow out so that the root system gets uh, gets good. And this is my second year with them. Now we've had some we've, we've eaten, but not a whole lot. Uh, but I can show you when I see one that has come up here. See right there? That's one right here. Look at that. And that would be the size that you would cut it. I'm going to let it grow. Uh, there's a couple of them here. If you can see them. See this one right, right there? And there's one right here. That's just small. And you let them grow and they grow tall and they get uh, they turn into ferns. Okay, I have an egg, eggplant sitting there. But uh, in the front of this uh, my asparagus garden, this year, I went ahead and I planted four okra plants right along the front there. The okra grows good here in the south. I got four plants. I've been been pulling okra off of it already for a while. But these these get big. They're going to get really tall, and they're going to start in the middle of the summer. They put out so many so much okra that I'll, I'll be able to sell okra. That's how much they they put out. They put out a tremendous amount of okra. So that's why I only have four plants because I'm gonna have so many. It's going to be way more than we can handle, so I'm going to bag them up and, and, and try to sell some. <clears throat> okay, so I do have some grass here in this area. Um, it doesn't work too good because uh, by 2 o'clock, when the sun is over this way, I start getting shade from my house. So uh, I used to have uh, try to grow in this whole section here. Um, I couldn't, uh, never, I could never grow anything on this side, so I just... <coughs> Sorry, cut the raised garden down to that right here. And I got the area here. And I, I can get through to get to my side of my house. I have a compost pile there. And I have uh, I have one little raised bed back here. And right now I have two uh, two uh, eggplants in it. And I just started, I just put some squash in the ground. <clears throat> some yellow squash. This was all tomatoes. They got attacked by bugs. Uh, but they're still putting out tomatoes, but I'm fixing to clear this clear this up. This is going to be all cleared out. This is my cherry tomatoes, and uh, I usually uh, do the cherry 100, and, uh, and then I tried another variety, which makes a little bigger ch cherry tomato. That's about the size of it there, and uh, this, is, this has been doing really well. I mean, we, we've got so many tomatoes, I could probably even sell tomatoes. <coughs> uh, I, just, I just took down my... Cucumbers, they kind of uh, started dying out. I mean, we got hundreds of cucumbers. And I just planted four more new ones that I started from seed. And uh, I still have uh, cucumbers growing on this side. Um, but this is, they, they, they're on their last leg out. There's only a couple right here. I see some, a couple of new ones. I'm going to let this go a little longer before I pull this up because uh, let, let these start growing so it's going to take a couple of weeks before they start actually growing uh, this is my herb garden it's another elevated garden that I put herbs in so I don't have many in there right now I have uh, some basil which is going to seed uh, I had some parsley back there that just died out because of heat some thyme rosemary and that I thought was chives but I'm looking down at the roots and it looks like it looks like uh, onions which is the same thing yeah I get it but this is the uh, this is the um, eggplant that you saw from the other side but we it's been putting out eggplants and we've been eating them there's one there needs to get bigger there's another one uh, another little small one in there so uh, we've been doing okay with the eggplant we don't eat, go crazy eating it but uh, 
Mindy blackens it. It looks good. So I got these two raised beds here, and they're uh, I put I put onions everywhere I can. They're all over the place onions, but these are uh, peppers. Now peppers grow great here. Now they don't look that great right here, but when it starts getting really hot, these suckers grow, and I get peppers that I could probably get enough of them to, to sell. We get enough peppers, but uh, I am going to make pepper jellies and things like that. So these these are my peppers with uh, other things mixed in it like uh, this is a squash I put here uh, this is some new uh, jalapenos or some secession planting that I'm doing um, see here's a, some secession planting I just planted these these here grew in my greenhouse and so they starting to take off um, same thing here um, I got some squash from the greenhouse I just recently put in some new peppers another squash yellow squash and this is all peppers and onions okay I know some of this looks they believe me they it comes back now here's uh, this was a bed the same thing uh, onions and, and uh, some of them coming up here's when it came up probably something coming in here digging I do have a problem with something coming in here digging I'm going to buy me a trap today to catch catch whatever it is because I came in here this morning I left this open by accident and the top to this can was all open and there's feed on the ground so that's going to draw ants I got to get that cleaned up something was digging in my feed something found out the feed was there and took the top off so I'm buying a trap I'm, I'm catching it I've been having trouble with this with this thing oh here's two more uh, blackberries that I just recently dug up um, this uh, rain barrels uh, I, I put city water in them right now that's for me to uh, I'm feeding the chickens with that uh, right now um, I, I use the nipples and the cups um, for them for water but I'm fixing it the, uh, the big one is going to take care of the whole chicken coop and the other one I'm going to set up to start collecting rain water and I got a little filter system that I have that I want to start collecting rain water and start filtering the water and I want to start trying it okay now uh, so uh, I got to get into that. That's another step I'm going to be getting into. That plus solar, because I want to get this whole area right here running on a solar panel or two, whatever I got to get to get it running. Because uh, we have hurricanes down here, and if the power goes out, I need this to be operating. Now you would say, well, hurricane, you're not going to get much sun, and that's true. But, uh, so I'm also going to have uh, a generator here. Uh, that could uh, run all this. Uh, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get a, a, a little gener, a little small generator here that can operate on propane, and I'm gonna set that up underneath here, so that I could always have uh, power here some kind of way. And I'm gonna be setting up a generator for my house, the same thing. Um, so I got things I'm still uh, working on doing, but I just want to show you how how much I got going on in my little backyard. Now, if I didn't have concrete, you guys. And I had all grass. I could I could put a lot more in here. See, I got I can't do that because I uh, I can't step over these beds like you can if you had uh, ground and you could uh, make you know I could make put more in the ground if all this was ground. And so I know most of you people out there don't have a backyard that's full of concrete, and you could do a whole lot more than I'm doing. And believe me, we do a lot here. We eat a lot out of the backyard. I have quail for eggs and meat. I have chickens, which I had gotten rid of my egg chickens. They were old. I gave them to a woman that has a property, and she puts them out there. She takes uh, animals in like that. And I had gotten me some of my, my new layers, and they're not laying yet. So we've been buying eggs in the store, and that's killing us because we haven't really done that 20 over 20 years. And we're buying eggs. Um, so anyway... I'm going to have meat chicken soon. I'm uh, getting into the pigs, the rabbits. Now, I was telling you I was telling you about rabbits that I was going to put the rabbits back there, but now I'm making a pig pen. So I'm going to, along my house, along my house, I'm going to make cages and put, that's the only place I can, I have left. I can make a row of cages there to put me some rabbits, to raise rabbits for meat. And even uh, to, for resale, uh, sell, sell meat rabbits and raise meat rabbits for us for food. So in my little backyard, if I don't if I don't do the pigs, 
I'll have uh, eggs, chicken eggs and chicken meat. I'll have quail eggs and quail meat. My aquaponics, I'll have fish. I got, I got catfish and I got um, bluegills in that. And um, <clears throat> we'll see how that works. I don't know if I can add any more in there. I'll try to figure it out, but I want to get some bass to put in there. But anyway, so I have that going, uh, and then I, I, I know, I know, if I don't do the pigs, I know I'm gonna do the rabbits. <clears throat> you know what I mean? So I'll have rabbits for meat because the rabbit, I, I could, I can uh, butcher those here in my yard. The pigs, I'm not gonna do that. The pigs, I'm gonna bring them to a, to a place and not that far off that will butcher them for me. And yeah, you gotta pay money, but. But I, I know that my pigs are not going to be getting uh, hormones and steroids and antibiotics. They're going to be eating, uh, you know, I'll scrap food and I'm going to be buying good feed for them, you know. So they're not going to be eating junk. So I know that the, the, the food's going to be good. Are they going to be, are they going to be, you know, pasture raised? Because they do have some pigs for that. No, I don't have that. I'm going to buy, I'm going to buy a, a smaller type of pig that you might get, uh, you butcher it at like 250 pounds, 300 pounds at the, at the most. That's when you butcher them. You know, it's not like a 600 pound pig. It's just smaller pigs. I mean, I can't do anything bigger than that in my yard. I mean, I'm, I'm, in a, um, I'm not even allowed to have any pigs, but I'm going to try two at a smaller uh, variety and uh, try two of them back there and then have them, have them butchered. And um, so I can have meat. So, um, that's what I'm doing in my little backyard, man. I just have my whole my whole lot all together is 55 by 120. So on that 55 by 120, I have a, a house that's 30 by 35. I have a front yard, and and that's another thing I'm gonna start. Uh, that's another thing I'm gonna do. Is have some edible uh, herbs and flowers and plants, uh, uh, little bu bushes that produces berries. I'm, I'm gonna be fixing up the front yard, but I'm, uh, if we don't move. So, um, so I have that. I have this this big 24 by 16 building. I have a, a 10 by 16 coop. I have a 9 by 10 um, greenhouse. You, you subtract all that off. This the deck here, this little area. Subtract all that off, and uh, the rest of it's for uh, growing food. It's not much. It's not much not much land at all and I'm packing it in and growing a lot of food you guys you could do the same thing and you need to start some kind of way and I would suggest I would suggest start by figuring out where you're gonna plant trees and get as many fruit trees citrus trees that you can on your property bushes blackberries the asparagus and I'm saying all that because these are things that come back year after year okay I have the strawberries back here um, I had them in another spot and I, one time I tried to you know watching the YouTube channel let me let my chickens run loose I let them run loose I came out they, they had destroyed my my strawberry patch I had 52 plants strong we were, we were at the verge where we were getting so many strawberries and it was out of this little bed right here so so right now I have I have strawberries all in here but I went ahead and mixed uh, some things like here's a, a cucumber I got some squash I got some tomatoes in here I got some peppers in here and I just got things all mixed around in here but I still have like here's a, a nice row of uh, strawberry plants and uh, so I'm letting them grow out and multiply right now I wasn't too worried about getting uh, strawberries this year a bunch of strawberries in here plants uh, so this fall I'll clear it out and um, but anyway gr think about things that you can grow that come back year after year your strawberries come back year after year uh, asparagus come back year after year blackberries blueberries you know your trees I get my peaches um, mandarins my lemons I'm, a, I'm a, like I said I'm getting an orange tree uh, my plum tree so yeah, I have have I got anything off from of it? Not yet, because that you got to get things planted. Because it, with trees, it takes a couple of years for them to get established before you start. You know, my my peach tree is like what three years old. 
or maybe four, either three or four. It, it survived a, a, fr a freeze that we had a couple of years ago. It survived it. It was only one year old at that time. So it's probably like three years old going into its fourth year. And it's, look at it. I mean, I mean, right now it's in the middle of the heat, but it even looks prettier than this when it's putting out all its fruit. Beautiful, beautiful fruit. But you got to get your trees and your bushes planted, you guys, so you can start um, getting that. So, so I would suggest that you, you, you try to lay out your yard. And you don't want to put trees where they're going to grow up and shade areas where you're going to be growing stuff. So, so you want to put your trees uh, along, like maybe keep them on one side of your yard along the fence and wherever you're going to plant your garden. And plant your garden where you're going to have the most sunlight hitting all day long. That's where you want to have your, your major uh, garden, okay? And, um, and, and keep the trees away from that so you're not creating shade and stopping growth on your tomatoes and cucumbers and peppers and squash and zucchini, your okra, whatever you like to grow. And um, so you got to, you know, so, so lay out your yard. Start with, with, uh, um, with the trees. Trees are a little more expensive. Um, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be selling trees. I am. Um, getting, I'm getting hooked up. Well, I'm gonna be selling. Uh, see, there's there's people out here in this area selling trees for forty bucks. I'm gonna be selling trees for like twenty-five and thirty dollars, uh, probably twenty-five dollars. Um, especially like the plum trees, the self-pollinating plum tree. Well, all you need is one. And uh, there's some apple trees that grow down here in the south that I'm have access to, and um, pears, peaches. Um, just a couple of different things, uh, the blueberry bushes, but anyway, um, so you, you want to, you want to start getting, getting those, um, now don't, don't go spend all your money on them at one time because you want to keep some of your money to, to invest in, in making your garden too. Now look, look, growing food, get it out of your head, oh, I'm going to grow my own food. It's not going to cost me anything. No, it's going to cost you. Okay, it's going to cost you time and money. Okay, it's not cheap to do this, but it's better for you. And it's going to eventually, when you learn how, uh, because you need to do things. I'm learning myself, you guys. Learn how to save seeds because, look, the shortages keep on happening. You know what's going to happen to? There's going to be shortages on seeds. So you need to learn how to save seeds. There's so much information out there on YouTube that uh, you, you, you almost can't fail at it. The only way you'd fail at it is if you quit trying. Okay? Now, I'll tell you this, too. When you're off of YouTube, you can see a lot of success stories. And some people, they don't show their mistakes and all that. And maybe some people didn't have no, no mistakes and everything went fine. But whatever you're seeing on YouTube... And you try it at your at your house, um, it could work, but more than likely, it's not going to work exactly like theirs because different soil, different water, different weather, different type of bugs. All these things are different, even in the same state. So you have to remember that if you're going to try something that somebody's doing on YouTube and try them, believe me, this is how I do all my stuff. And um, you got to always pay attention to what you're doing. You have to, you're going to have to tweak things. And just because it fails, you don't give up. Don't look at it as a failure. You look at it as a step to now. I don't do that anymore. Now I'm going to. Now I know what to change or what not to do. And change things and, and tweak it and because even even when you tweak things and you get it down and you could have a good couple of years going strong let's say your peppers you got them down man they're going 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 all of a sudden one year flop and you've been doing everything the same okay that kind of stuff happens all right so you just gotta um, but you know when them, those years happen and you don't have as many peppers you know maybe something else did better and 
So it's all a learning process all the time, you guys. It's, you're never going to uh, arrive when it comes to this. Uh, it's always a learning process, okay? You're going to arrive in some ways, but you're always going to have something happen because it's, that's how it is. You're always going to have animals that die. Um, um, you're going to always have uh, a time. Uh, this is the first year. First year I've ever had any, any of my plants attacked with caterpillars like those tomato plants this year. Now, now, probably my fault. Something I learned this year. I'll tell you what it is. There was a guy down the street from me posted in, in our little neighborhood Facebook page that we have. I got extra tomato plants for, uh, that I want to give away. And I saw it. I went and got them. It was 20 plants. I brought those plants here in my yard and planted them. That's what I did. That's what I did wrong. I went in somebody else's yard and got plants and brought them into my yard. I never ever had the problem. I had stuff eat some things, but nothing at the level that I experienced this year with those tomato plants. And it's just on those tomato plants. Now, I, I feel like, because I got tomato plants right next to it, not a thing's happening to it, okay? These being destroyed. Now, uh, apparently the they must have died off or went through their process and maybe became butterflies or moths, whatever, I don't know. Because I don't have them anymore, but it's at the end of the season for these plants. They totally wiped out. I'm still getting a few, but I'm fixing to take that. I'm going to burn all that. And, um, I'm not even feeding it to my chickens. And I think that was a mistake I made. I took uh, somebody down the street has a, has a problem with caterpillars. And I brought them down here. So uh, I didn't do anything to treat it. I just lived with it. I kill what I can by hand. And um, it wasn't spreading to anything else. So... I was kind of like, well, maybe I'll just leave it here so that they stay confined to this one area and they don't get in the rest of my stuff. That was my thinking, so I just left it, let them eat it, and uh, I would come out if I could if I could get some fruit off of it before they attacked it and, and it wasn't just starting to get a little color to it. I would pull it off and set it in the window, and that's how I did it. But I lost a lot of fruit there from the caterpillars. And so, uh, but you learn. You live and learn. Okay, so that's all the stuff I got going on in my little yard, you guys. And, um, and I'm not finished. As I told you, I'm planting on the pigs and the, and the, uh, the rabbits, the microgreen farm, the front yard edible garden. See, I still got things. I'm still thinking on things, way to produce and to grow, okay? Uh, I, I'm not moving quick on them, all these things because we could possibly be moving like next year. So uh, as this year goes a little further, we're going to know more what next year is going to be bringing as far as uh, money coming in for us to be able to make the move. Okay, so that's what we've been looking at. Sorry, I, I ran it on all day for a while to, this morning with you, but I really uh, <clears throat> would like you to, to get a hold of some of this and start growing, start doing things. You know, um, tell you, quail, quail, you know, uh, now, look, I grew up in the city. My dad never did any kind of hunting or fishing. I didn't do that growing up. That's not, I never did any of that. I had to learn how to butcher. I never did that before, butcher an animal. As a matter of fact, I was the type of guy, if I saw blood, I got sick in my stomach, and it would cause me to get sick and throw up, or, you know, just things like that. Um, having, growing my own food, knowing that it's my food, it clicked something in me, it changed something in me, and I'm able to butcher. This is the first animals that I butchered, and they're small, thank God. It's great. They're great for practicing because they don't cost a whole lot. Your initial does, you know, building your cages, buying your everything, figuring out uh, all this stuff I learned off of uh, YouTube, making little these little boxes so that they don't waste the food. Um, I made the incubator. Now, there was nobody on YouTube that made one like this, you know, but there were all people that make incubators. And uh, see, when I first built this, it was two, there were two of them this length. So I just came out here. Uh, I made an incubator inside uh, out of a, a styrofoam uh, ice, 
ice chest, and it, it just wasn't it wasn't cutting it. I mean, I, uh, it just it wasn't gonna work. I can tell. Uh, I didn't even try it, you know, and I could tell. So uh, I went ahead and cut this thing down in half and, and started building this, and I made this, and. Um, uh, I put one time I collected 50 eggs. I put 50 eggs in there, not one hatch, threw all the eggs away. Another time I collected 50 eggs, put them in, nothing happened, threw them away. So, um, so then I uh, did a little modification on it. I added a fan. You can see there's a fan back there. Um, I added that in to circulate the air. Cut a hole in the very bottom, which you can't see, so it's circulating air. It's sucking air from. There's a chamber I added in the back, and that, that, I don't know if that did it totally, but uh, one of the other things I did was instead of collecting eggs for a whole week, I only collect eggs for two days, and I put that in there. So I get 18 eggs, and I put them in there, and ever since I've been doing that, I've been getting hatches. So, uh, um, so, so, um, quail is something good to start off with. Uh, they're small. They don't cost a lot to take care of. The maintenance is real minimum on them. And, um, and when you have to time the process them and butcher them, it's a very simple process. And it's something that if you've never done it before, it's something that you can do. And then the next thing would be to get you some, some chickens. And, and you can start off with just getting you some egg layers. Okay? And you, and you, and you build your little coop and, um, and uh, start, start having your eggs. And learn with your chickens like that but way before you get meat chickens these meat chickens will freak you out if you start off like that you've never done anything like that before <clears throat> so uh, start there start with the chickens chickens is always a good starter and I, uh, I re highly recommend the quail you get eggs every day off a of quail yeah they're smaller but you can pickle them you can you can buy there's a certain pair of scissors for cutting the top off you can you know two two eggs equals one chicken egg and um, so you can get you get quite a few eggs with the uh, with the quail. Uh, I highly recommend it. Um, it's probably the easiest animal so far to to raise that I've you know out of the chickens. I mean, it ain't like I had a whole lot of animals to raise over the years. But um, anyway, okay, all right, guys. So um, that's it for today. Uh, I'll even uh, maybe update some more on the, on the little uh, baby quail here they are here. Look at them. There's ten of them right there. There's ten in here. There's two in here. And we've still got more eggs to hatch. So we'll see if we get any more eggs hatching. So I'll keep you updated on the quail. All right, you guys. See you in the next video. Y'all be blessed.